Today's podcast, episode number 99, is brought to you by the Binge Podcast Network. The Binge Podcast Network with my guy, Dominic Lawson of Owls LLC, as well as the Startup Life Podcast that you got to make sure that you check out, as well as all the podcasts that are on the Binge Podcast Network. Nothing but buckets, let's be real, just blurting, um, all the way up and down the entire roster. You need to go out to onabinge.com to check out all of the great podcast content skills and heels is still coming Uh, we got that coming here in just a matter of weeks with shea brown uh, that's going to be joining the lineup we're excited for that and so we want you to take the time out to binge listen on the various podcasts that are on the binge podcast network of course the Minding Your Business podcast is brought to you by Brooks Brothers Consulting. Retail banking consulting as well as lending solutions can be found at brooksbrothersconsulting.com. That's brooksbrothersconsulting.com. Episode number 99 here on a Friday, June the 28th. But you know what we do. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Right. Thank y'all so much. I am your host, Chambron. This is the Minding Your Business podcast, Friday, June the 28th of 2019. Entrepreneurship, real estate, trending news. There's no business like minding your own. Shout out to everybody that's on Spreaker. Shout out to you that are on Facebook Live checking this out. I didn't tag a bunch of people on Facebook Live today. Uh, I just wanted to see what the reach was going to be uh, organically by just going live and seeing uh, what happens. So I appreciate uh, the opportunity for all of you to connect. We are getting so close. We're one episode away from number 100. I'm excited about that. I've got a great guest lined up and uh, we're going to chat about a few things. And I'm going to share some things and, and kind of express some thank yous and share some background stories, some things that you may not be familiar with with the podcast. The podcast will be two years old in August, and for us to reach 100 episodes is is a big thing, and we want to carry that forward. And so I'm going to talk about everything prior to episode one, coming all the way up to episode 100, uh, some of the changes, some of the support, some of the not-so-supportive, everything, just so you can get a sense of the experience and what it takes uh, to operate your podcast and Uh, That sort of thing. So I'm excited about that. But for today, what I want to get into uh, here on the podcast on episode number 99 is growing your business by attending industry conferences. That's growing your business by attending industry conferences. So let's go ahead and jump right in. On this week, I attended a banker's conference. As you know, my background is in banking. I attended the Bankers Conference in Austin, Texas. It was for Illinois Bankers Association. Uh, So shout out to all of them there. It was a phenomenal conference. I mean, very well put together. The leadership was engaged. All the staff with the Illinois Bankers Association was engaged. Um, They were very kind to me, kind to other exhibitors, other vendors. And, of course, the bankers were phenomenal. Got a chance to meet some great bankers and spend some time uh, with some folks that I'd be meaning to spend some time with or um, who are already doing business with me or I would love to be able to do business with them at some point here in the near future or even in the somewhat distant future. One of the things I wanted to share with you all is there is great you know, we, we toss this word around value all the way, all the time now. That's something everybody learned to spell here in the last five years <laughs> is is value. Everything's got value. No, it doesn't, by the way. <laughs> um, but there's a there's great opportunity, let me say that, in attending industry conferences. One of the things that I found that works best for me is at the start of every year, right? So, and this is whether you're in business, whether you're a sales rep, whether you're a corporate executive, whether you're um, a corporate sales rep or account executive, whatever that is, um, you want to get into an opportunity to be in one place with uh, a number or myriad of prospects and 
industry leaders and industry influencers and that sort of thing. One of the ways to do that is to attend their events, find out what the association is. In banking, there's a number of different associations, and many industries have their fiduciary groups and um, their associations and their networks and things like that. I encourage you to get involved. If your budget does not say the same, <laughs> right? And I've been there, right? Your your budget it says different than what you want to do because most of these events and conferences have uh, expenses to it. For me to go to the Illinois Bankers Association in Austin, I had to register. Um, that registration cost me uh, about twelve hundred dollars. All right, I had to buy a plane ticket. Plane ticket from Memphis uh, on Delta that connected through Atlanta to Austin, Texas was uh, just a little short of $500 for a round-trip air ticket just for myself. And that's in the main cabin. Uh, that's not the Delta Comfort Plus or the or First Class or any of that kind of stuff. Hey, I'm on the plane. <laughs> All right. Um, the JW Marriott, where the conference was held and where yeah, I had a room. And I always like to stay in the hotel where the conference is going on. It's just great convenience. I don't have to have the expense of renting a car or do, uh, doing Ubers all the time and that sort of thing. I can kind of manage that expense by just being there where all I got to do is come down the elevator and go right to the conference area. But uh, the Bankers Association had a special rate on that, and that was two twenty nine a night. So if you take that, I was there for two nights attending this conference. So if you add that up, plus, you know, every hotel has got a bunch of fees and things like that. So that was about, let's just call it $550 for two nights in the JW Marriott in downtown Austin, which I do recommend, by the way. All right, so you're adding up these costs, the cost to register, the cost to, um, you know, actually travel, the logistics cost of getting there. And, of course, then you have the cost of actually exhibiting, if you're going to exhibit, um, you know, if you have your booth and whatever your setup is, and I encourage you to get with uh, your marketing contacts on that as to the best uh, way to show and and be set up at the conference. So if you're exhibiting, then you got the cost of either you got to bring your booth with you, which you probably got to check it on the plane, <laughs> or you got to ship it down to uh, the location, which could cost depending on how much it weighs. Uh, could cost you anywhere from thirty to say a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars to ship it one way, and then of course you got to ship it back or you got to check it back uh, on the airplane when you're coming back. I prefer to just mail it down. It's just it's too much. It's too big. It's too much of a hassle to take uh, booth stuff on an airplane with you. Trust me. Um, unless you got something small that that can fold up, like just a tablecloth or something like that, um, it could be a bit of a chore and a bit of, you know, of a challenge taking it on an airplane so anyway that's just a lot of the cost that i go into and it, it depends on the location if you're if you attend the conference that's more local and you can drive and you know it's in your city or it's just the next city over then that you know obviously affects your cost and and things like that but a lot of the conferences that i attend are a good distance away i'm i spend a lot of time in the midwest nyb and so so that just gets you some of those logistics so then if that's not in the cards for you, if you're listening to this podcast, and again, don't feel bad because I've been there. When I tell you I've been there, I have been there. And many listening have been there, right? So if those costs that I laid out are not necessarily in the cards for you, here's what you do. Most associations in anywhere across industry are always interested in people that are willing to volunteer, quality people that are willing to come in um, free of charge and be able to volunteer, right, to help do whatever task. It could be uh, checking people in at the conference. It could be manning a door. It could be helping to serve dinner, lunch, breakfast. It could be a number of different things that whatever affinity group that you're attending, whatever their event is, that they would love to have volunteers. Well, that's your ticket. Because if you come in and volunteer, here's what I found with volunteering. It's a great way to connect with people. And this is just volunteering in general, whether it's at a conference or whatever. 
it's it's a great way to connect with people, particularly at a conference within your industry, to meet leaders of the association, staff of the association, uh, staff at the location, um, to be um, recognized for your support and your um, your efforts around volunteering. It's a great way to meet all the things that I talked about earlier, prospects, existing customers, the staff, everybody. It's a great way to meet these people, right, without the cost. And so if you ask about a volunteer, then all of them may not need it, but I, I guarantee you most of them will. They're not turning down free help, and, and if, especially if they feel like it's good help. So if you volunteer, right, you got to be on time. You got to be dressed correctly for the occasion, for the environment, and make sure that you have your materials, your business cards and whatever flyer and things like that, and you have those things ready. And so when you get a chance to meet people at this various conference and you're there volunteering, a lot of times what I find is the work that they have you actually do is usually minimal and it's usually not real time consuming. Sometimes it is, but most of the time it's not. And so that leaves you a lot of free time sometimes because these conferences can be all day over multiple days. So that could leave you a lot of free time. Plus, you've been building uh, goodwill and contact with the staff such that they're fine to let you participate in other things because you volunteered. That's the trade off for volunteering and you not being compensated could be. You get a chance to go to the breakout sessions and to meet the speaker. Maybe you get a chance to um, help the speaker um, with their logistics and things like that. All those are great ways to meet people. So if your budget's not there, what I mentioned earlier, you can't you don't have the budget to fly places. You don't have the budget to drive here, or rent cars and stay in hotels. That's fine. You know, now, if it's out of town, you know, you're going to have to make that decision. Right. And how you're going to get there, where you're going to stay and that kind of thing. But if it's in town and you can still kind of stay at home and you just drive to the next city or down the street or whatever, it makes sense to volunteer. So try that next time and let them know that you'd like to attend. It's maybe not quite in your budget, but you love to attend and you love to be a resource in helping them achieve their goal with the event. Um, I can about guarantee you that nobody's really going to turn you down with that. So that's just one nugget I wanted to share with you today. So, But when you attend these events, no matter how you get there, um, there's a few things you want to keep in mind. One, um, you want to make sure you understand the events where um, the attendees, so the people within your industry, um, what are they look, most looking forward to? And so when you look at the agenda of an event, I tend to take the event agenda and I tend to break it down to, you know, they, there's going to go be some kind of opening ceremony. There's going to be times where they let people go to talk to vendors and things like that. And so you want to know the timing of that and who's kind of ushering that along. And you want to meet that person. A great person to meet at these conferences is the person that's going to be running around trying to organize everything. Because he or she is going to be busy, but it's good for them to know who you are and what your goals are. And maybe if you already know, because sometimes with these events, they'll give you the attendee list. You want to get that attendee list so that you can uh, scrub it and see what existing customers you got, what prospects, who you want to talk to, where they located, and look out for them at the conference. All right. So you're here at this conference and, you know, the conference is getting ready to kick off. What I do is if I'm exhibiting, I want to get there at a reasonable time, set up my uh, exhibit. And I want to look for vendors that complement what I do. Okay, so in retail banking consulting, I like to connect with people that are, you know, maybe they're compliance consulting or maybe they're um, ATM vendors or they are um, deposit acquisition consultants or they um, whatever it is that has to deal with any kind of tie to, say, the retail branch within the banking uh, setup. That's what I want to be a part of. Why? Not from a competition standpoint. Because some people, they're, they're so wrapped up 
and we've talked about this on, on other podcast episodes, people get so wrapped up into competition that they lose. Because the minute you start focusing on so much on competition, you lose the, the side of yourself and what you're there to do. So I'm not worried about that. I'm looking for people that complement what I do and you're able to visit their booth and befriend them. And there may be um, warm referral opportunities because at the end of the day, everybody that's there exhibiting at a banker conference is trying to talk to bankers. If you're at an athletic conference, you're trying to talk to people and other people in athletics, coaches or players or other vendors, things like that. If you're at a marketing conference, you're trying to talk to people that are in marketing, digital marketing, print marketing, whatever it is. All right. So you want to get a chance to get in front of some of the vendors who may be talking or have warm relationships with the person or people that you're trying to get in with. And what better way to get in with your prospect than a warm lead from someone they're already doing business with? I'll tell you, business is about likability and trust. Okay. Those are two things that are at the top. There are other things. But people do business with people they like and they trust. All right. How do you get likability and trust? One of the easiest ways is to get that from someone else that they also like and trust. (laughs) Right. So it's not that difficult of a game, NYB. You want to get that likability and trust factor as quick as you can. And one of the quickest ways to do that is connecting with other vendors a lot of people don't do that they think that they're there in competition with everybody for attention and that's a poor way to go about it in business in general or at a conference if you go about it that way then you're going to place yourself one you're going to stress yourself out two you're going to be running around and you're probably going to alienate people which that's not necessarily always a bad thing if you're ruffling feathers for the right reasons But if you're just around there pissing people off, NYB, um, you're not going to have many advocates on the day of reckoning. (laughs) So and I've been there before. All right. So when you're at these conferences, you know, one best practice is to go in, meet the vendors. Right. It's particularly vendors that compliment you. Okay. if you're in the financial sector, you handle one piece of the financial sector. Maybe you handle. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you're a stockbroker. All right. Then someone on the insurance side can be very helpful if they're talking to the same target audience that you're looking to talk to. So you may be able to help each other in a bi-directional sense that creates a good um, goodwill and good value back and forth. Okay. Um, One of the best ways to build your Um, your business up with people is when you can offer solutions, even if it's not yours. One of the things that's helped me um, through my career and one of the things that's helped me as I've built my practice is when I sit down with a banker, even though I do retail banking consulting and I help with CRA and, and that sort of thing in terms of helping banks tie into their low to moderate income communities where they do business, that's not always either at the forefront or that's not maybe an immediate need at the time that I meet with the bank. So here's what used to happen. All right. What used to happen is I show up with my song and dance and it's all about me and I've got my marketing flyers and I've got my pad, you know, a paper and my pen and I've got my PowerPoint deck and I've got every my, 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 me, me, me. And I'm going to go in there and, but, you know, I want to help this bank, but it's all about me. And what happens is, is then it's a short meeting if the bank doesn't need at that time what I'm providing. So my value, we were talking about that word value earlier. My value goes, it's gone. I come in with high value, or at least I think I do. (laughs) But then five minutes into the meeting when they don't need they don't need help with their branches they don't need help with their digital banking and they don't need help with their call center they don't need help or and i'd say they don't need it they're not willing to invest in it at that time through me 
So now, I, you know, what am I doing? Now my are my meeting's over. If I'm able to even plug another vendor that again I like and that I trust, that allows me to build my relationship with my contact. So I go from not just the retail banking consultant, but I go to a, a, a trusted advisor. And that's what you want to be able to do with your business is over time, you want to be a, a source of um, advisement, meaning that I, I'm working towards getting to a point when, when a banker calls me, they know exactly what I do, but they look for my insight, my opinion, even on things that have nothing to do with what I do, but are within the banking confines. Because they just like to be able to bounce the ideas or they want to know, do I have someone that I like and trust that I can make a warm introduction or referral to? So they say, hey, Ron, we need help with fill in the blank. I know that's not what you do, but you've been able to help us in these other areas in the past. And because you were able to help us in these other areas, uh, can you help us here? And I say, here, let me see what I can do. Let me see who I know. But share with me what is it you're looking to do. And on some, there are a few occasions, y'all, where I'll do that and then all roads will lead right back to what I do. They just may not be able to connect the dots, but that's why I'm there. All right? That's why I'm there. So I'm able to connect the dots. So being that resource for uh, a potential prospect or even a an existing customer just elevates your value so don't disregard that or don't um, belittle that because it's not giving you an opportunity to do something that generates revenue for you right then it may generate it for somebody else and you may be able to get referral fees i'm working on something like that that just came this week when i was in austin that's gonna pay me a nice referral fee back because I made a warm introduction. And so I've got in the view of that banker, who's the CEO of a bank, I'm that much more of a resource. So now he's more apt to call me, even if it has nothing to do with Brooks Brothers Consulting. And that's where you want to be able to get your business too. And that's why attending these conferences uh, becomes invaluable. Now, if you're exhibiting at the conference, uh, depending on where your location is within the exhibit hall, um, here's something I want you to consider. If you're in the you're in a prime location. So I've had times where I've been at a uh, conference and I was in a prime location. Prime location is I'm by the food and I'm by the alcohol <laughs> or I'm by the entertainment. One of those three or more, I need to be by the food. I need to be by the alcohol. Now, it depends on the conference. You're at a, um, you know, Christianity or a religious uh, conference. There may not be no alcohol. Maybe there is, but I'll leave that alone. (laughs) But depending on the conference, you know, food, alcohol, the one thing folks go do is they go eat, they go drink, and they want to be entertained. That's just a human being. All right. Particularly at these conferences when they're out of town. So people are out of town and they sometimes they bring their families and they're looking to use it as kind of a mini vacation on their company's dime, whether it's their company or company they're working for. And so you want to be as close to that as you can. If you're not. All right. You uh, there's been some conferences where I've been. Um, on the back side where not as much traffic comes in, that's okay, but you're going to have to commit to, you got to spend some time away from that booth. Um, And that's not the easiest thing because some conferences require that you uh, stay near the booth or you don't want to miss out on someone that may visit your booth while you're away. So here's what you do. You befriend Like I mentioned earlier, one of the vendors that are on each side of you, if you have them on the left or the right, you happen to be between two vendors. You need to befriend them to the point where you're learning about what they're doing. And you say, hey, listen, um, we're on the backside here. So 
let, let, here, let, let's work this together. I'm going to go spend 15 minutes away from my booth on the other side where it's busy, where the food, the alcohol, and the entertainment is. Can you watch my booth and text me if someone comes by my booth? And I'll do the same thing for you so that we both can get value out of this. There's that word value again. So, but we can both hopefully connect the ROI of what we want from this. So most people are going to be okay with that. So what I do is you pick out a 15 minute block, let them know, and then go on the side where all those things are going on with your business cards or, you, you know, that sort of thing. And introduce yourself. Part of the thing of networking is you have to listen. Networking is not just you telling people what you do or listening so that you can interject with what you do. You, what you want to do is you don't want to get into the weeds of every little thing that you do. All right. When, when you're at a conference, you don't need to tell them, oh, this is my widget and this is how it works. And this is the value it's going to give to your company and to you. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to be that. Don't be that guy or girl. <laughs> All right. What you want to be is you want to set the tone for a future discussion. That's your whole mode of networking. OK, it's about you getting the next discussion. It's no different than when you're dating. And I've said this. I said this on 10 other podcast shows. All right. It's all the same. You go on the first date for it to go well to get the second date. All right. It's the same in business when you're at these conferences. You want to engage. You want to um, understand what they do. Maybe get a pain point. People do business when there's a, a prick in the side. Okay. They do it with people they like and trust. And what gets them, what creates the sense of urgency is. When there's the prick in the side, the prick in the side is what problems do they have? What problem either keeps them up at night or gives them concern, the most concern. You're not going to get that while they're sitting there with a beer in their hand at a conference. I'm sorry, you're not going to get that. If you're talking at the right level. Now, you're talking to people at the, if you're if it's an entry level conference, you may. But at a a conference where you're talking to decision makers of companies, whether they own the company or they're the CFO, CEO, uh, VP, SVP, EVP, whatever, pick the letters. You're not going to get that kind of time and they don't want to talk that high of a uh, or that low of a level, that detailed of a level. So here's what you do during that 15 minute block where the vendor next to you is keeping an eye on your booth. Because keep in mind, you're reciprocating that when it's their turn, right? To be fair. When you go out for your 15-minute block, MYB, what I want you to do is um, you see a group of people talking. It's four or five people. You come and you just kind of, you know, you're not eavesdropping. You're just kind of buzzing around. You're waiting for a chance to get introduced or someone to acknowledge you. When they acknowledge you, hey, how you doing? You walk right in and you look at people in the eye and you introduce yourself to those four or five people. What's the natural question they're going to want to know? What company are you with or what do you do? Okay, now here's your elevator pitch. Okay, you have to know it. And it can't be as long as this podcast is going to (laughs) be. Right? They're not going to sit there and listen to you for 15 minutes to tell about every damn thing that you do or that you've done or that you want to do. You need to have two sentences on what you do. Two. And you need to be able to say those two within 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds. Why? Because everybody's got a beer or a wine in their hand. (laughs) <laughs> right they're out of town they're there at the conference they're checking the box they're not going to give you two minutes to talk in most cases if they do they're not paying you any attention you just there talking alright 
what you have to do is you need to have two sentences. Who you are, here's what I do. If, they'll, if they want to know more, they'll ask for more. They're adults, they'll ask for more. Oh, what does that mean? That's interesting. Then you can go into another two to three sentences if they ask for to expunge on what you initially said. Okay? After you do that, you want to share with them the business card and you want to ask them, who sh- are they the ones that they should connect to to have further conversation or would they recommend that be somebody else within their organization? That's when they pull out their business card and they either tell you that there's a few things they're going to tell you. They're either going to tell you, yes, I'm the one. And we should talk. Um, Yes, I'm the one, but I'm not interested at this time. Um, No, I'm not the one, but you should talk to fill in the blank. And either they're there at the conference or they're not. And if they don't offer it up, you should ask, do you have that person's name and contact? And could you make a warm introduction for me? Whether that's over the phone or on email. Get their commitment to that. Right? Um, Another thing they could tell you is, no, I'm not the one. And no, we're not interested. They could speak for their entire company. That's fine. Because again, you're just meeting people for the first time in a lot of cases. That's fine. If you're going to be there in the conference for a few more days, if it's someone that you really want to connect with, spend some time with them. One of the things I did, I do when I go to conferences is, um, and it, again, it depends on your budget. And I'm going to give you something slick here in a minute. But if you have the budget, take them to lunch, take them to dinner, take them to breakfast. Doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Starbucks, Dunkin' Donut, whatever it is. You can go someplace and say, hey, I'd love to get conf- uh, coffee and I'd love to hear more about it, I'll use my case for example. I want to. I want to learn some more about your bank. You know, of course, I can read everything I want online, but I want to hear from you. I want to hear, you know, what drew you to this bank, and you know, what's some of your strategic goals and that sort of thing. What are some of your personal goals within that? They'll be open to that, and now that's an opportunity, again, to build the relationship. It's not just about doing deals. It's about building a relationship. That's what you're interested in doing. Now, everybody says they're interested in doing that. You won't hear any business say, we're not interested in relationships. We just want to do transactions. No. Everybody wants to have a relationship. Till it's time to have a relationship. (laughs) So, you want to differentiate yourself. So, just be around. Every time you see them, remember their name. A trick to remember your name is everybody's got the name badges Try to think something in your mind. Either write it down on the like you can uh, pull out the name badge out the little slit or whatever. Write it on the back, or just think. You know, if depending on what their name is, think of something in your mind that you can connect that to. If you're a big um, Terminator fan, right? <laughs> you know, you love the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, and you meet somebody named John. Just link it to oh man, that's John. They like John Connor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you, um, you're a big Spider-Man fan, and you meet somebody named Peter. Oh yeah, that, his name's Peter, just like Peter Parker. Whatever it is, whatever quirky thing you got to come up with, so you can remember names. So every time you bump into Peter or John, you could call them by name, right? And you can, you know, continue to build that familiarity. So every time, so when I'm at a conference, every time I run into John, if he comes by my booth, if I see him where in, in the uh, times when uh, there's breakout sessions, or if I see him around the hotel or the resort, if uh, during lunch or dinner or whatever is being served, if uh, if he's walking around, he's looking for a seat, and I've got a seat at my table, I say, hey, John. He turns around, and he's like, hey, you know, got one open if you're looking for a place to, to land. All right? All that is building the relationship so that by the end of the conference, when you see him, make it a point to see John before you leave. 
and say, hey, John, it was so great meeting you. Um, I still would love an opportunity to connect with you to show you what I can do to help solve some of the problems either we've discussed or I'd like to learn some of what you're doing such that I can be a resource to you. So it, it can take some time. So your first interaction may not be them falling all over you wanting to you know, do business with you right then. You've you got to build the relationship and you got to have some patience. Now, I'm doing that with John and everybody else there. John, Jane, uh, Latoya, whoever else is there, I'm connecting with them that way. So it takes a little bit of pre-work before you go to the conference if you can. If you could do a little bit of pre-work to know who's going to be there, who you want to make sure you talk to. And then if you could talk to the principals or the staff at the conference, let them know. When I go to the when I do business, I, I believe in the level of transparency. Right. People know what I'm coming to do. It's no secret. I'm coming to drive business. And I want to connect with people and build relationships because I want to be a resource to people. So it's no secret. I show up and I meet the staff and I let them know, hey, I want to meet John. Could, would you mind making a warm introduction to him? If he's part of their association or whatever his role is with it, or he may just be an attendee. And say, did anybody with the staff know John? They say, well, I don't know John, but so-and-so does. Or, yeah, I know John. Um, he's the guy over there in the green jacket. Great. Could you, would you be willing to make an introduction for me? Most of them, they say, sure. It's networking, right? They're there to network, too. So they may either tell John to go by my booth, or they may say, hey, John, I've got someone that wants to meet you. Again, likability and trust. And if you get that with someone that's now a mutual contact that's making a warm introduction. So now I get a warm introduction to John through whoever else. Right. So these are the things. This is how you maximize your opportunities at these conferences. Now, if you want to participate in the conference in the future. OK, that's something this is where you utilize your relationship again with meeting the conference staff. Have if you so you want to be a speaker at next next year's conference. OK, here's what you do. All right. Before the event, look at the type of speakers that they have. What's their background? Where are they from? What's their experience? Ask the whatever the association. Look at their different events. It may not be their annual conference. It may be some other event. Ask them, what's your process for selecting speakers? They'll tell you and they'll connect you with who kind of runs that uh, piece of the business. And say, hey, I would be interested in being a speaker. I speak on fill in the blank because this is my background. Now, you got to do a little homework because you need to have a bio. You have a, a one page bio, not full of graphics. Not You're not trying to see how fancy you can make it. You need to have a bio that tells them about you, about your background, how to connect with you and what you've done. Because This is about credibility. It's not about hype. You can't hype your way through this. If you go be hype only, go be broke only. <laughs> If you be hype only, you're going to be broke only. All right. It, you've got to be able to show what you've done. So you you got to answer the question why. And you got to answer it quick. Everybody wants to speak here, Ron. Why you? Let me tell you why me. Here's what I've done. Here's what I'm doing. And here's what I'm looking to do. And I've got that within consistent within my messaging with what I'm providing you and I'm building the relationship with you. I'm speaking at an event next year in Illinois, in Springfield, Illinois. Why? Because I did just what I shared with you. I didn't have a six figure budget. 
I'm not some FDIC guy from Washington, D.C. I don't run some billion dollar bank. It's just me. And I'm speaking why? Because I asked those questions. I provided my bio. And now I'm through going through the RFP process. With that opportunity to speak. That I'm going to get. Right? So if you want to be um, a speaker at these uh, conferences. And you want them to transition to sp- uh, paid speaking events. Because here's what will happen. I'll speak at this event. Someone else is going to say, hey, I want you to come speak at my event, right? There, there's all these sub things going on. So that's, that's what can help launch your speaking career. But you've got to be active and diligent. And it can't just be about your hype. It can't just be uh, because I, I do this and I like this and I like to hear myself talk. It's got to be here's what I bring because here's what I've done. So before you get a chance to go to the association... You need to speak locally. Churches, other affinity groups. It, it doesn't matter how big it is. MYB, listen to me. It, I believe Malcolm X, his, one of his first gatherings had, what, three or four people? Well, I thought I remembered reading that. Malcolm X. It starts small. Even if it's a group of five to ten people. Get some pictures of it. Get some video of it. And do a great job. Because what you need is credibility. You got to be able Because no one's going to ask you to come speak. And you've never spoken. <laughs> and social media is not, not the portfolio. Doing Facebook Live is not the portfolio. It can help. But if you want to speak people live in person. You got to start speaking to people live and in person. So I don't care if it's at the country club with 10 people. I don't care if it's at the library. Just get busy. But Ron, those are free. I want want to get paid engagements. Work. Everybody wants to get paid for doing nothing. If they could, they would. But you got work. So when you're at these conferences, it's about building the relationship. Whether you're there and you're volunteering or whether you paid the money and you're there at these conferences, make sure that you're going through the best practices of your prep work ahead of time while you're there. And then now let me speak to post the conference. So you've had this great conference. You're you're excited. It was good. You get back home. You've got materials from people. You've given out business cards. You've gotten business cards. Um, your follow-up is so critical. And you hear that all the time. The difference between people is their follow-up. Again, get past the hype of it. The follow-up. When should you follow up? If you get back from the conference on Friday, don't start calling people and writing letters and doing stuff on Friday. They haven't even gotten back to their office yet. Good. Don't even do it Monday unless they unless you've scheduled that. Give them about a week. And I know y'all gonna be sitting there, and I know y'all MYB. Some of y'all are eight uh, personalities, and y'all ready to jump on it. But give them temper that just a little bit, and give them some time to get back and get their bearings. Because guess what? Everybody else in the world's gonna do. They go start following up right immediately. Boom, boom, boom. Not necessarily wrong. And it dep- some of this depends on your industry. But make sure that you give them some time to get back acclimated, you know, back into the office, back settled. And what I do, um, I prefer to send a letter. Now, sometimes you can ask them what's the best way to follow up with you and that sort of thing. But what I like to do is I like to send a letter because that's hard in your hand. Everybody gets, again, it it depends on your audience. A bank CEO gets 100 emails a minute. So if I send an email, I'm just 101. What I recommend is I send a letter, um, maybe even just a, a note card. 
handwritten. Get you some note cards from Walgreens or, or you know, Vistaprint, wherever you can order that type of stuff or, or whoever, whatever small business owner that does um, stationery. Get you, you know, 50 to 100 note cards. Get you some stamps. All right. Hand write you a, a note card thanking them for the op- whatever it is, the opportunity to con- connect. Um, if there's something you remember from one of their conversations, add that into the note card. Hand write the envelope. To you, I mean, write till your hand fall off. Don't print because printed envelope look like a bill. <laughs> Y'all know what that is. Printed envelope look like a bill. People open handwritten envelopes. They don't get as many of them anymore. And the, the thought, the psychological thought is a handwritten envelope came from a human being, not from somebody, not from a machine in the warehouse. So handwrite the card, send it to them. So if you get back from the conference on Friday, give them about a, a week or so, maybe that, let's just say that next Thursday. Handwrite a note and put it in the mail. They'll probably get it it'll pro- if the delivery runs on Saturday. They'll get it then, or they'll get it that following Monday when they get back in the office. So first thing Monday morning, they'll have this mail delivered to them, or it'll be waiting on them. All right. Tuesday of that again that following week. So you get back from the conference on Friday. The next Thursday, you send the letter or the, the note card, the following week, that Tuesday, make a phone call. Hey, Ron, did you get my uh, note card? Yeah, Ron, I got your note card, man. I appreciate it, man. I, I appreciate those kind words and yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you've got an opportunity. Hey, man, we, it was great meeting you at the conference the other week. I hope your travels and everything was safe. Did you make it back okay? Oh, man, yeah, it was good. Or, no, oh, we had a plane delay. Or, you know, whatever it is. My luggage got left or, you know, whatever it is. You're going through this conversation. You say, hey, listen, Ron, you know, from what we talked about, I'd love to go into just a little bit more detail. Is now a good time or when would be a good time for us to talk some more about uh, how I can deliver for you and be a resource for you? And I want to learn some more about fill in the blank. Now you're, you're, you're developing the relationship. So that's your post follow up. That, and that's what I recommend. Some people like the phone call. Some people like the emails. If they're in town, some people like to make a, a face-to-face visit. For me, again, I like the tangible of the letter. It's low cost. I mean, the cost of your stamp and your time filling out the envelope and the card, writing the card. But it, it has so much more impact because, again, it's tangible. Email's not tangible. Phone call, people screening calls all the time. And in, in my industry... Getting the bank CEO on the phone, and you, you'll get Jesus on the phone first, <laughs> or whoever, whatever religious character or whatever. You, you'll get them on the phone first before you get some of these bank CEOs. All right. So that's the pre, during the conference, and then post conference. Also, don't forget the staff at whatever the association is or the affinity group. Make sure that you send them. A, a handwritten note card as well, thanking them. And if you talked about maybe a, a, a potential speaking engagement, make sure that you follow up with that person. Okay, send a, a note card, follow up with a phone call. Did you get my call? I have a reason to call. So when you get the the office manager, whoever that screening calls, that gets paid to screen calls, just say, hey, listen, I was following up with Ron and I wanted to make sure that he got my note card that I sent him. Now she's going to get you past all of that. <laughs> Erica Dallas on uh, Facebook Live laughing and talking about Jesus. Yeah, in banking, Erica, you'll get Jesus Christ on the phone before you get some of these bank CEOs or CFOs on the phone. You will not get them on the phone. I'm just going to tell you. Because they don't answer it. They pay people to screen it. The office badger picks up. ABC Bank. I need to talk to Dan. Uh, Let me see if he's in, sir. Hold on. She comes back. Dan's not in right now. Do you want his voicemail? Dan could be sitting right there. 
he not answer your call unless you call and say, um, a branch is on fire and I need to talk to Dan. Uh, you know, other than that, if, if you're just following up, they're there to screen calls. So it all depends on every industry is different. It all depends on the level of person that you're dealing with. You may not be dealing with the CEO of a company or the, the, the top decision maker. So that may be a little different. But it just depends on who you're dealing with. Okay. So as you gear up for the next event, you know, make you a list of what went well. Just like anything you do in business. What what went well? What would you do different? So you say, hey, what went well is my booth had a great location. Uh, I was able to connect with 20 prospects. I saw three existing customers. I met five vendors that could possibly refer me business. And those same five, I could refer business back to them, I believe. Um, you know, and then you got all the logistics stuff and all that that's personal. On the downside, hey, maybe my booth was not in the best location. Um, how could I get it to a better location? Or is this particular conference or event better to not exhibit? Maybe it's better for me to just attend. I could save that 1200 bucks like I paid. Instead of paying the 1200 bucks, maybe I do something different. Maybe I take five or six key prospects to lunch or to dinner. Maybe I buy them some kind of plaque, you know, or or maybe I just save that money altogether. It just all depends on, you know, what you see. But that's what it's about. You got to follow up and you've got to connect. So the work after the conference continues. And let's just say if it's an annual conference and it's not going to be again till next year, you still want to be once a month, once every 45 days connecting back with that association you'll get their emails and you get all of that but you want to be checking in and when they start releasing things six months later for the next year's conference then you may want to come back and say hey can i get a better location than i had last year for my exhibit yes no maybe all right so you know that's where you get your opportunities and so again if you don't have the budget you know, don't listen to this and think, well, damn, Ron, I, ain't, I don't have $3,000 to go attend one of these conferences. I get it. I'm, I'm not the guy that's going to come in and you make it seem like everybody should have that and have this and, and all that. Everybody's situation is different. Volunteer. Or just ask. A lot of things can come to you, even in your business, NYB, if you just ask. They don't know unless you ask. What's the worst thing they can tell you? Go to hell? A lot of people probably done told you that. Have you been? No. So don't worry about it. All <laughs> right? That's the worst thing they can tell you. No, go to hell. So what? But if you ask, you never know. They may say, yes, come on in. All right? So I hope that discussing this about conferences can help you and help your business. And when I say business, it could be the business that you own. You could be self-employed. You could be working for a company, whatever your business is that you're doing, you're conducting these best practices apply. All right. So think about that, write them down, ponder over them. If there's other things other than speaking engagements, you want to be able to do, you want to be able to host a breakout session. You want to be able to, um, get five minutes in front of that person or this person. You've got to build the relationship first. So again, temper down the hype. I'm not saying don't be hype. Be excited. But taper that down for your vetting process and building the relationship. You'll get so much further. Because again, it, this is bigger than just posting on Facebook and getting likes and shares. That's not generating business. That's a hobbyist. If you want to collect rocks, go collect rocks or collect baseball cards or whatever. Go do that. Not knocking that. But in business, all right, if your your end motive is to be able to grow your business and convert um, introduction to a prospect, 
uh, to active prospect to um, close business, then you've got to follow down that pathway and you've got to build relationships with people. People are guarded now. They're advertised to about everything and they don't want to be sold to. They don't. They don't want to be sold to. They want to be able to have a relationship again, like they lo- people they like and people they trust. All right. Listen, thank you all so much uh, for tuning in. Again, I hope this was um, something that you found uh, worth your time. I hope that it helps you in your walk with your business as you attend events, attend conferences. If I could be a resource, Ron at the NYB dot com. Email me. I'd love to hear about your success. I'd love to, if you've got questions, if there's ways that I could be a resource for you, let me know. The NYB is where you can learn more about the podcast, see other exclusive content, and uh, connect with us and listen to now one of now 99 episodes. My next episode is number 100, and you want to talk about hype. I'm going to be. I'm going to be through the roof. A lot of y'all don't know me from being hyped up and through the roof. I'm going to be hyped up and through the roof. But I've got a plan. And I'm going to have a great guest. And we're going to talk about some things uh, as it relates to the Minding Your Business podcast. Uh, It's history and and where I'm looking to take this thing uh, going forward. So, listen, have a great weekend. Entrepreneurship, real estate, trending news. There's no business like minding your own. I'm Champ Ron. Thank you to everybody on Spreaker.com. I haven't shouted you out enough today, but I see y'all, everybody that's on Facebook Live, Erica, Jamie, what's going on? Danto, what's up? Derek Sykes. Law, what's up, man? Eagleston, fly like an eagle. Marcy, what's going on? Sora Caronda, what's up? Fred. Matt, what's going on? We got PHP in the house. My sister Jennifer, what's going on? Renisha, what's up? Steve, what's going on? BJ, Randall, what's up, brothers? Tim, Rod Selman, what's up? LaShawn, what's going on? Lisa, Michelle, Ma Janet, what's going on? Jimmy. Clee, going back earlier. SK, what's going on, man? All the people. So I'm excited. Listen, everybody have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. Uh, Next week's going to be kind of wild. So it's going to be a tough week next week because Independence Day is what? uh, Thursday, uh, July 4th. So it's going to be a tough week. A lot of people are going to be taking time off. A lot of people are going to be running around. (laughs) You know what I mean? So... Um, it's a great time in your business to spend some time doing some reflecting, um, planting some seeds and, and that sort of thing. So continue to do what you do. Be great for yourself personally and professionally. Be great for your family. You're the very best you that will ever exist. So you make history every day. So live in that. Definitely. So again, episode 99 is in the books. Y'all go be great, man. Peace.